The Geek Blend presents Vader's Castle, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to Vader's Castle, a coming to you from Mustafar. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a really good day. Um, let's see, what is today? What is today? <laughs> wow, my iPad did not show what day it is. I'm going to, okay, yeah, today is March 3rd now on Friday. So technically, well, Thursday night still, I'm still recording on Thursday night. Um, so yeah, hope you like that nice little intro with the, uh, Krennic's Aspirations title from Rogue One in the background. Um, again, welcome back. Um, doing something this, different this week. Um, this podcast is being read from a script that I have written. Um, I tend to get off topic and repeat myself a lot, so I figured, why not try a script and see how that goes? And since I didn't get a chance to do an episode in the last couple weeks, this hopefully won't be too long. Hopefully, I ran. I did a recording of it earlier that didn't go as well, so it was only like 22 minutes, so I'm going to kind of maybe elaborate on some stuff that I do have on the script that I didn't seem as excited about. I kind of sounded weird on the, on like, when I was reading it from a script, I wasn't going, I wasn't reading it as well as I thought I was, so maybe going off script is not going to be as good as I would have hoped, but we'll kind of maybe just kind of play with the script and then, you know, go off topic a little bit or just kind of do it on our own, so maybe that's a little better. Um... All the stories I'm going to talk to you guys about today are coming from StarWars.com, uh, MakingStarWars.net, um, StarWarsNewsNet.com, and ComicBook.com. Check out these sites for great Star Wars content daily. Even ComicBook.com, that cesspool of clickbait, is a good place to go. Seriously, it's a cesspool of clickbaity. I do not like this. I'm done, done with this website. I've unfollowed everything they do. It's just crap. Everything has been just garbage from them. So, um... First thing I want to talk about, I'm going to Star Wars Celebration in Orlando this year, guys. I'm going. I'm absolutely freaking going to Star Wars Celebration. It's April 13th to the 16th. My amazingly gorgeous, awesome, freaking amazing wife got me tickets for Valentine's Day and our, like, one-year wedding anniversary as a gift. And I that's, like, the best gift ever. Like, seriously. One of the other best gifts she ever got me was to a concert for my favorite band, like, that I... Never thought I would ever have a chance to see, um, cause they're not an American based band and they can't come to America that often. So, but yeah, she bought me tickets to that. And this is the second time she's bought me tickets for something I really want to go to. So like baby, if you're listening, I love you. Thank you so much for these tickets. That's it's, I'm so excited. I can't wait. My friend Brandon's going with me. We're going to have a blast. I'm going uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm going to skip Sunday so I can get up, you know, we can do our thing and get back on the road. Because it's like a 14-hour drive. And he lives... I li- I'm, I'm going to be living in Evansville, Indiana, where I'm moving to next week. And he's going to still be living up here where I am six hours north. So I'll have to take him up to Indy to, or to wherever he is going to be able to be picked up at. So it's going to be a long freaking drive. Uh, he will be driving half, more than half the way while I sleep a lot of it. So, But yeah, I'm really, really pumped for this. Um, they just announced this week that the Thursday is going to be a panel celebrating the 40th anniversary of a new hope. And it's going to be on the first day. So I'm going to try and get in line as soon as we get in Orlando that morning. If they're even lining up yet, depending on what time we get there, we are leaving. Let's see. Yeah. Wednesday afternoon, we're leaving and driving all night to get in that morning. And we're going to sleep back and forth and, you know, and uh, drive down there. We're going to get in to Orlando and be at a convention all day long. I hope one of us gets some sleep because that'll be a long day. I mean, I know that our, our like excitement and energy will carry us through the day no matter what. But once that like the convention's over that day and we get a quick bite to eat afterwards, we're going to hit the hotel, check in and crash. I guarantee we're going to crash out. So I really want to, to make, I don't want to miss that panel at all. Um, Kathleen Kennedy is going to be there and that's going to be hosted by Warwick Davis who played wicket. And he also had a cameo in the, um, Cantina scene in The Force Awakens. I forgot what his character's called. I forgot. Oh, man, I had it in my head, too, right before I started. I should have looked it up. Um, also, they're saying on the Star Wars Celebration site that, um, talking about the panel, that's going to feature a lot of not-to-be-missed surprises. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think George Lucas is going to be there. 
Um, this is the 40th anniversary of A New Hope. Like, it's his baby. I really think he's going to be there. I think, uh, you know, Marks and Hamill's going to be there. I think Harrison Ford's going to show up. I really think they're really going to kind of go all out for this. I really hope they really do. I mean, a lot of people are probably, like, I just said Harrison Ford uh, out loud. Now if Harrison Ford doesn't show up and be like, oh, shit, Harrison Ford didn't show up? That sucks. Because now I'm getting in my head about it. I need to stop that. Because whatever happens, I'm going to be afraid. It don't matter. I'm going to be excited as hell. That's fine. You know. Um, and then Friday, they're going to have the panel for The Last Jedi. And I'm freaking pumped for that, too. I mean, I guarantee the entire main, like the main cast will be there in attendance. So that's going to be a really, really awesome sight to see. I did watch the panel from The Force Awakens that was in Anaheim back in 2015 before the movie was out. And that was an absolute electric crowd. I mean, go online. You can watch. I think if you type it on YouTube, uh, the crowd awakens. And it's a celebration when they play the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Just even the panel, like, before they showed the trailer is just, yeah. But that was like a, I mean, it's still going to be like that. But that was a, you know, whole new thing. Like, Star Wars was back again. And that was like, you're not going to get that again. Like, that anticipation before The Force Awakens. I mean, it was awesome when the movie came out, but like that anticipation leading up, like I remember one, a person, a f- YouTuber that I watch, well, well, channel YouTube and channel I watch, so there was somebody on there. It's like, this is it. It's coming out next week. This, the, the anticipation's was gone. Live it, like revel in it, take it in because that when it's over, it's over. I mean, hell yeah, it's gonna be great when the movie comes out, but that anticipation is some of the fun of this stuff. It really is some of the fun. I really like that. And of course, some people don't, but you know, it's, I think it's so much fun. Um, it's kind of sounds like we should start lining up for that panel the night before. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be rough. Especially if we, <laughs> if we didn't sleep hardly at all in the car, the way down there, uh, I'm in a Facebook group for people going to star Wars celebration. I'm going to del- leave it a script link in the description, whatever uh, site you're on, listening to this or wherever you are. And if you're going and you would love to meet up with fellow Star Wars fans, um, they really, if you have any questions about anything or you're a newcomer or there, a lot of people on there have been a lot of celebrations, including like the first couple of celebrations that were like celebration one and two and three. These people have been to them and they'll answer your questions. And it's really cool. These people are great. And they talk about the buttons they're bringing down there to, to trade and give away the swag. It's really a cool group. I recommend you highly check it out. And they're doing all kinds of meet and greets. There's like Forcella, Force Cella is like a, at a Universal City Walk. There's a, um, a karaoke bar. They're doing like a, um, a Star Wars um, night out kind of thing with this group, with this YouTube channel called Star Wars 20. Um, speaking of Star Wars 20, there's a YouTube channel they have. And they have a really great video on what to bring, what to expect a celebration. Like if you've never been to a celebration or hell, even a convention. Like, I had no idea. So I go on there and I watch this video and they're like, bring a backpack. I'm like, all right. They're like, bring food. I'm like, all right. They're like, bring water, tons of water. I'm like, all right. They're like, don't forget extra batteries for your cell phone because you're going to be taking pictures and videos. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. And then all this stuff they're talking about, you're like, oh, shit. I didn't think about that. They're like, bring a change of clothes. Like, bring an extra shirt. Because if you're staying in line all day, you start sweating. You don't want to sweat all day. You want to smell like that. And they're like, even bring some like Listerine because you're going to be talking to people all day. Or bring some gum or some mints or something. And so I'm like, damn, I didn't even think about this. Like, and they're like, make sure you have really, really good, comfortable shoes on with really good inserts too. If you're going to be, cause you're going to be on your feet all day. So, although I did buy this little Coleman, like a little stool, like a little, um, event like seat in a bag. It's cool. Like it unfolds into like a little chair. It's pretty sweet. It like fits in the backpack. It's awesome. So I'm excited about that. I did buy a new backpack too. It's like a Rebel Pilot orange backpack. Oh, it's freaking sweet. It's got so many pockets. It's got like a iPad pocket inside of it and everything, and like side pockets for water bottles. I mean, there's like just probably like 15 pockets on the thing. It's fantastic. I'm really excited to use it and check and load it with like you know, you know, probably not a flask. I'm probably not gonna do that. Brandon said something over the weekend last weekend. He's like, "You should take a flask." I'm like, I wonder how people will take. I mean, I wonder. I'm gonna ask on the Facebook group. For celebration, how many people are taking a flask in their backpack or whatever? They check for that stuff. I mean, they really check deeply in your backpack. Maybe I'll just hide a flask in like a phone case or something. You can go to flask phone cases. I'm just teasing. I'm not going to take a flask. I'm not taking a flask. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. 
Uh, anyway, I recommend checking these guys out on, on YouTube, Star Wars 20. They did, uh, there's two or three now videos about uh, Celebration and what's coming and what to expect. And then the, also they talk about the nightlife and the restaurants and everything like that. So, Also, I would really check out uh, StarWarsCelebration.com. There's a lot of places on there. There's a place you can print out a list of restaurants that give you discounts and all kinds of like free appetizers on free drinks and 10%, 15% off your bill, all that stuff. So check that out too. Um, I'm going to take millions of pictures and videos. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like an exaggeration, but you never know. Um, I will also most likely do a live stream on YouTube and probably Facebook as well, depending on the live stream setup on YouTube. Maybe even freaking, well, no, not Twitch. That's more gaming stuff, but yeah, I'll do like Facebook live and YouTube and stuff streaming. So, um, so you guys can expect like a lot of content. So I'm going to try to get a special episode of Vader's castle done while I'm down there. Like maybe, maybe the night of the, of the, uh, last Jedi panel to like talk about the news, like the trailer and stuff like that. Um, I might even do like a real quick video, like in celebrate in like in the like event center after we get out of the panel for the last Jedi to like talk about the trailer real quick, just to get it up online for you guys. Um, so I'm going to try to get some special episodes of this stuff done, like Vader's castle. And then I'll do some YouTube video stuff too, as well. And then when I get back, I'll do some wrap up videos and I'll do a wrap up podcast and we'll discuss everything from the entire trip. Um, also, by the way, guys, um, when I move to Evansville next week, I'm gonna, I have uh, one gentleman that's going to be helping me with the, with the um, YouTube channel and the podcast and what we're doing here with the Geek Blend. And I got another guy that I'm talking to that may be interested as well. And then there's another guy I started talking to today thinking maybe he might be interested as well. So it might just be more than me in the next few weeks. I really hope that would be cool to really get this channel to take off because I have quite a few friends down there that enjoy this kind of stuff. And I know they would love to just talk about it for hours on end. So I think we could do some roundtable discussions and stuff like that, or maybe go sit at a pub with a microphone and just talk about stuff. You know, if it's Star Wars or comic book movies and stuff like that, or genre movies or fantasy and sci-fi, all that stuff. But yeah, so, I mean, we're looking forward to doing some cool stuff for you guys. So um, I'm going to talk real quickly that um, John Williams won his 23rd Grammy for The Force Awakens, and he's also been conducting on The Last Jedi. That's really cool. I'm going to read a quote. I believe it's from uh, Star Wars Newsnet. Um, Legendary composer John Williams won his sixth Star Wars Grammy, this time for his work on Star Wars The Force Awakens. Also, a new report confirms that Williams is currently conducting the score for Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi, which is pretty freaking sweet. Um, I love John Williams, and he deserves every freaking Grammy he gets. Um, I can't wait to hear his score and what he has planned for The Last Jedi. And I, like others, was sort of underwhelmed at first by his Force Awakens score. I know, I know, I know. It's blasphemy for a Star Wars fan to say anything negative about John Williams. And I rarely don't. After listening to it multiple times and seeing the movie multiple times and letting it sink in and like connecting it with stuff, it really gets better and better. And it's becoming one of my favorite soundtracks from all seven films. And a lot, there are some people out there, even pe people who love the prequels, who didn't think his prequel music was like that great. I'm like, go back and listen to it again. And listen to it, and listen to it. He went all out on the prequels. I mean, episode one, you know, you all know what we got in episode one. I mean, he went all out in that one. I mean, that, man, now I'm blanking on that damn song, but he went, that is, people play that all the time when they talk about John Williams and Star Wars. That's like one of the first ones that pops in your head besides the Imperial March and um, like the Force theme. I mean, it's just. He, he's legendary. Everything he does is legendary. So I'm really, everything he does, every, every like award and accolade he gets is, is well-deserved. So congratulations to John Williams and hopefully he gets one for the last Jedi. Um, next up, um, a new star Wars comic crossover is coming. It's called the screaming Citadel and it's going to be a Gothic horror story. Interesting. It sounds really cool. The screaming Citadel describes an infamous castle located on the edge of space. It's going to be a five-issue crossover that we'll find in its first issue, Luke Skywalker teaming up with Dr. Afra. The writers for this crossover are Kieran Gillen and Jason Aaron, and the artist for this issue is Marco Chachetto. I hope I didn't butcher your name, Marco. I'm sorry. The story starts with Luke and Afra, Han, Leia, and Sana Staros will join the story, and we will see different pairings of characters th throughout the crossover. The crossover will help comic book shops, digital, and physical copies in May. 
I guess that's what it means by comic book shops. Why did I write physical when a comic book shops means physical? Uh, I'm not caught up on the Marvel Star Wars comic, and I have not started to read Dr. Aphra. So I don't... I really need to do that. I mean, it's expensive to... do. It's an expensive hobby, so... I just I I haven't had time to read a lot of stuff. I do I did read the the Darth Vader Marvel comic, and if you are a fan of Star Wars at all, you have to read that. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to do a, a review down the road sometime of some of these comics, and that's one I'm going to do. I do have some of the old Star Wars uh, Dark Horse Vader comics that are fantastic as well, in my opinion. So, if you're even though that's legend stuff, if you love Star Wars and you want to read that stuff, go for it. But the Marvel Darth Vader comic. Just, it's amazing. I love it. But it's Vader, and I, it's hard to go wrong with Darth Vader for me. That's, like, my, my main thing. Um, so, like I said, the um, it's an infamous castle on the edge of space. That's how they're describing the Screaming Citadel. Uh, the concept art is really, really cool for it as well, and you can check that out at StarWars.com. Okay, next thing, we're going to talk about Rebels. And you all know we were going to talk about Rebels. They la- the last couple episodes have been really great. Um, the Mandalorian episode with Sabine, and then in Through Imperial Eyes, it just happened. Just two fantastic episodes. Um, the Through Imperial Eyes with um, Agent Callus, uh, where um, spoiler alert, Agent or uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn figured out he was Fulcrum. Which we, I wonder if he kind of knew that for a while. And he was just kind of holding on to the information a little bit, and he didn't. He was just waiting to find out for sure. But man, it was such a great episode because Callus, it you know, he thought he got away with everything. He like that it just went through like on the edge of your seat. He's doing everything, and you're like, oh my god, he got away with it. But then he didn't leave with Ezra. He stayed on, stayed behind. You're like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. He's cool. And then nope, Thrawn knows he's Fulcrum, and you're like, oh shit, this guy's screwed. This guy's absolutely screwed. I think they're just gonna feed a lot of false information through him, and I I really hope Callus gets away because I really like that character. The episode with him and Zeb trapped in that pit with those creatures, that is a fantastic episode. Like, I just love Callus. I really do. I really hope they don't kill him off. I hope they move forward, and I hope he hope he ends up playing like a big part of the rebellion. That would be so cool to see. So, all right, let's get into some descriptions here of these last five. Um, these are the last ones. This next one is it's going to air this Saturday, March fourth. It's called episode. 318 Secret Cargo. When a routine refueling mission goes wrong, the Ghost Crew finds themselves transporting an important rebel leader across the galaxy, pursued by Imperial warships. I'll discuss these all these these titles and stuff after I've read them all real quick. Next up, 319 Double Agent Droid, 3117, Sunday, March 11th. Chopper and AP5 team up to infiltrate an Imperial station to steal needed codes, but an Imperial Specialist turns a droid against the crew to cause chaos. 320 Twin Sons, March 18th, 2017. Reacting to a vision of Maul, Ezra defies Hera and Kanan to travel to a remote planet in hopes of stopping the former Sith Lord from carrying out his plans. 321 Zero Hour, Part 1, March 25th, 2017. In final preparations for their attack on Lothal, Phoenix Squadron plans are disrupted when Grand Admiral Thrawn discovers their location. 322 Zero Hour Part 2, March 25th, 2017. Trapped on Altolan with the rebel base under siege, Hera and Kanan fight to keep the squadron alive as Ezra attempts to rally help from an unexpected source. Wow. Those sound like some great freaking episodes, I tell you that. So, um, let's go into Secret Cargo, sounds like Mon Mothma will be the rebel leader. They are transporting him across the galaxy, and in a little clip we had from at the end of last week's episode, it, that appears that's who it is, Mon Mothma. Um, I, was, I was saying it was either going to be her or Bail Organa, and it turned out to be her, because, you know, Bail Organa would be cool, too. But Mon Mothma, since she's a big like, senator, you know, and, and this is a big thing for her, so that'd be great. Um, Double Agent Droid sounds like a fun droid episode. It might be a little bit of filler episode before the end of the season, like one last filler, but hey, it might be an integral part of the story. You never know. But it sounds really fun, and it sounds like they're going to, AP5 and Chopper are going to get reprogrammed and turned against the Rebel, or the Gross Crew. That sounds really cool. And now, the one you all know we want to see, 
twin sons. We all know that's Tatooine. <laughs> so I'm guessing that Ezra will try to stop Maul from doing what he's doing, which we, the audience, know is hunting down Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the one we're all waiting for after that epic trailer they dropped for the last part of the season with that final shot of old Ben. And wow, just wow. So I'm really excited for this. I'm yeah. And then 21 zero hour part one will be interesting as it seems that Thrawn has discovered the rebel base on chopper base, which we know now that he's, I wonder how he's going to figure that out because chopper erased that out of the archives in Thrawn's office. So I wonder how he figures that out. I think it's going to be because the fulcrum he's just going to lead. He's going to, he's, they're going to callous is going to lead him straight to him. So, uh, that's going to be really interesting to see how that works out, but yeah. Um, and part two will be the ending of this and possibly the ending of Thrawn. I really hope not. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a cliffhanger with the rebels in disarray. And I just don't, I really hope they don't kill off grand Admiral Thrawn in the finale. He's only been on one season and he's such a big part of a lot of people's Star Wars lore. Like with Timothy, Timothy Zahn's like Thrawn trilogy and people who love legends and that, that character so much. I think it would be a disservice to kill him off so fast. Like let him live on. And so maybe he can pop up in a standalone film or even like a saga film down the road. If they revisit like a different era in the saga film, like I don't know how long his race lives for. I mean, he could be alive still in the uh the timeline we're in now with the last jedi i mean i'm not sure how long i don't have to look that up i'd really really be interested to see how long his race uh, what their lifespan is so but if they do kill him off what are they going to do are they just going to say like hey you you got you got a grand album of thrawn book that's coming out i mean that that's that's good right is that enough no <laughs> disney and lucasfilm it is not enough hashtag thrawn lives Twitter, go to Twitter, hashtag Thrawn lives. Please, people don't kill him off. Please. Rebels did return on February 18th, and we got two great episodes, and uh, it does air at 8.30 p.m. on Disney XD. And guys, I'm considering doing a, a very kind of short but descriptive um, Rebels like recap review show on uh, Saturday night or like Sundays. Um, I'd like to do one for each episode, but with the move, like rapidly approaching, like moving like next week, like next Friday, I'll be loading up the U-Haul moving down and we'll be unloading everything. And next week I'll be like unboxing everything and get everything, you know, straightened up. So I might wait and do like a long, like I might do like a long video for just the last five episodes or maybe like the last seven since the last two I didn't talk about yet either. Um, the Mandalorian uh, episode with Sabine. And then through Imperial Eyes, um, I'll keep you guys posted so you'll you'll know what's coming. Um, next thing I want to talk about, um, Star Wars Land opens in 2019. And this is from StarWarsNews.net or StarWarsNewsNet.com, sorry. Our new Star Wars themed lands at Disneyland Park and Disney's Hollywood Studio will be opening in 2019. Disney chairman and CEO Bob Iger just made the announcement. Many of you have been so anxious to hear during the Walt Disney Company's quarter one earnings call. Well, you know where I'm going to be <laughs> in 2019. But seriously, though, I'm probably going to plan and try to plan a vacation that year to Disney World with my family. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss this more when they release more about the attractions and more about the park down the road. But seriously, guys, I think you probably like we don't know what part of 2019 they're going to open the park. So we can't just go buy tickets for Disney world yet. Cause we don't know when. So as soon as they find out, we find out when it's going to open. I think we're going to try to plan a family vacation. I've talked to my sister-in-law who's a travel agent and I'm like, let's get this booked. Like we need to, because it's going to be freaking nuts. It's going to be insane. It's so busy. So, but you know, <laughs> maybe we should do it. I'm not sure, but I'm really excited. I'm, that's going to be awesome. Um, Another thing I want to talk about real quick, uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars may be leaving Netflix on March 7th. So um, this is reported by comicbook.com, the clickbait garbage site um, that I will not be using ever again for a source, guys. I, I'm not, I just, they've done a lot of stuff lately I just don't I like and appreciate. So um, bad news hit the internet for Star Wars The Clone Wars fans as Netflix listing for the series on mobile shows 
an end in sight. Currently, the listing for this show says it's available until March 7th, 2017, meaning the full six seasons of the Celebrated Anime series would come off the streaming service that day. Fans can stream every episode of the show commercial-free, including the sixth season that was first released on Netflix. It's not time to panic just yet, though. Comicbook.com continues. Netflix, uh, Netflix often puts the end of a contract date up as the available until date, even while a contract is set to start that same day. Also, the film that kicked off the Star Wars The Clone Wars has no end date listed on the mobile or main site, so that would be weird if the movie is still on there and the series isn't. So, even though, like, because technically that's the first three episodes of the series before Lucas decided to break it off to a show. Uh, finally, as noted above, the sixth season of the series, while now available on Blu-ray, debuted on Netflix first. It was a near unprecedented thing at the time for a series to see work that was originally completed for another network show up on a streaming service that way. That means that Disney slash Lucasfilm and Netflix have a great relationship, and that's accepting the fact that Disney also has a broader distribution deal with Netflix and that Marvel works with Netflix on a regular original content. Um... Comic Book also stated that they reached out to Lucasfilm for a statement on the situation. For now, however, I'd heavily advise anyone interested in watching the series to do so now, just in case. Um, if you have not seen the Star Wars, if you've not seen the Clone Wars, and you are a Star Wars fan, I'd go to Netflix like and start binging like now. I know that's like just a few days, but really, I think you should do it now. Uh, it's such a great show, and if you haven't seen it, I mean, and if you're watching. Rebels, and you're like, eh, I don't know who this person is. I don't know who this person is. And if you don't know who like Ahsoka Tano is, get your butt back over there and watch it. I mean, I don't think it's going to go away. I really don't. I think they're going to renew it. I really hope they do. Um, because Disney, they saw that deal with Netflix, but I think maybe Cartoon Network still has the rights to Clone Wars too. So I maybe that's why they're pulling it. If they do, if it does happen though, you can always buy it on Blu-ray and DVD. Um, Amazon has seasons one through five on Blu-ray right now. For fifty seven ninety nine in a box set, um, it's usually ninety five ninety nine, so that's like a damn good deal. So go check that on Amazon dot com. Um, when will we see a trailer for the Last Jedi? I'm guessing at Star Wars Celebration. Some people had speculated the Super Bowl, but we all knew that was not going to happen. I'm almost one hundred percent sure we will see a trailer at Celebration during the Last Jedi panel. And there is another rumor going around, and here is a quote from Star Wars News Net. Okay, we contacted one of our sources who shared with us an interesting tidbit. According to him, right now they are hard at work on a new behind-the-scenes reel for The Last Jedi, which will be the first footage that we will see from the movie. This means that there will be no teaser trailer before Celebration. All rumors on the web which earlier date with earlier dates are not accurate, as are the reports with teaser descriptions. While a behind-the-scenes reel premiering during Celebration is not surprising at all, since they did pretty much the same for The Force Awakens and Rogue One. It is interesting that we'll be heading into Celebration without any of the Last Jedi footage released before. That is, of course, if we don't count the brief starter production video that Lucasfilm released back in February. End quote. Okay. I do not think we will see a behind-the-scenes reel before we see a teaser. Remember, we got a behind-the-scenes featurette for The Force Awakens at San Diego Comic-Con that year. This is after two teaser trailers. I highly doubt that Lucasfilm will want our first footage from The Last Jedi to be from a behind-the-scenes featurette. That being said, I could see them playing a behind-the-scenes reel at Celebration after they show us a teaser. I am definitely going to get in line for that Last Jedi panel at Celebration because I want to see a trailer with that freaking crowd. If you are not going to Celebration... StarWars.com will be live streaming all the panels and all a bunch of other stuff too. Like the Star Wars show will be live with all kinds of cool guests all day long. So check that out. It will also be on our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, it happened a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to talk about it because it was really awesome. Um, StarWars.com has revealed our first look at Finn, Ray, and Poe via box art for the toys coming in September for Force Friday 2. Here is an excerpt from the website. Attention Star Wars fans, it is time to make some room on your desk, toy shelf, bookshelf, and in your closet. Disney and Lucasfilm today announced Star Wars Force Friday 2, a global fan event celebrating the launch of Star Wars The Last Jedi products. Toys, 
collectibles, books, apparel, and more will go on sale beginning at 12.01 a.m. on Friday, September 1st, 2017. With stores around the world opening for a week-end long celebration of all things Star Wars. That's really cool news. And really quickly, I want to talk about the um, Poe and Finn and Ray reveal on that on that bo- box art for like the toys, like they did last time with Kylo Ren for um, the Force Awakens. Looks like that Finn looks almost the same, except he has a different shirt on. Um, Poe looks exactly the same in his pilot uniform. That's awesome. Really badass looking helmet. Looks like the Black Series helmet. They've going to put one out of that helmet so cool but ray looks different her hair is different she got a different outfit on looks like more of a jedi robe and tunic going on and she has some like scars and like not scars i guess some like blood up again up on her like left brow like above her eyebrow so i wonder what's been going on with that so interesting to see our first look at them on the toy box art but i believe that was our first look at kylo ren as well maybe I don't remember exactly. Um, Another Force Friday is coming. Um, When the first Force Friday came around, before The Force Awakens, I was in line before midnight at my local Walmart. Um, It was really fun. Even though I lived in a smaller town and there was hardly anybody there, they did have buttons, cupcakes, and other free stuff they were giving away. Um, I'm going to definitely be in a much bigger city this time with a Target and like a Toys R Us, so I'll be going to either one of those locations this time and maybe kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, so also, there's a Myers there, so. Um, I really can't wait. I really enjoy these kind of Star Wars events. Like, you know, it, it would have been cooler if there were more people. Like, I ran into some people at Walmart that were in line, and then when I went to Meyer after that, there was a couple people looking for stuff, but, and I talked to them here and there, but it'd be, it's, it's really cool to have that in-line experience and talk to your fellow Star Wars fans. Like, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to at Celebration. I mean, not a lot of people like looking in line, but that's the thing what they say about Celebration is you get, you make friends because you're all there to talk about one thing. That's Star Wars. You're all there to talk about one thing. I mean, Comic, San Diego Comic Con is great. I'd love to go there one time. It's bucket list thing, but it's everything combined. It's not just one thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it'd be cool to just have a line like that um, and, and talk about that and like, with the anticipation of what are you going to buy? What are you looking for? What are you hunting for? You know, um, I'm probably going to do a video or a live stream while I wait in lines. Um, hopefully I'll have some people to join me that actually want to be there. My wife and my niece, God bless them, went with me last time. So I had company. It was cool. They came, but they really weren't into it, of course, but they sure did like, like the free stuff, the buttons and the cupcakes and stuff. And I'm most definitely looking forward to Force Friday 2. And the reveals will be getting for the merchandise along the way. I like how they kind of tease a little bit here and there. Um, I hope we get some kind of Supreme Leader Snoke figure this time around. Like anything. Like preferably like Black Series or hell, even like Hot Toys would be nice. Like a 1-6 scale figure. Or at least some kind of Snoke related stuff. I just want some Snoke stuff, man. You know, that's all I want. Some Snoke stuff. Um, okay. Um, well, that is going to wrap up another episode of Vader's Castle. Coming to you from good old Mustafar. Uh, real quickly, I want to give a few shout outs. Um, first to my friend, Chad Allen, if you're listening, Chad, I really appreciate your support, uh, for the podcast on the YouTube channel for commenting and sharing and liking everything. And, um, I just really appreciate everything that you're all your feedback. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate that. My friend, Brandon Miller, uh, you share everything on Facebook that I post and you really kind of help hype it up and You like everything, you talk to me about everything, and you really kind of give me some feedback. I really appreciate you, too. Thank you very much for that. And, of course, my amazing wife, who got me tickets to the Star Wars Celebration, who always posts and shares my stuff on on Facebook and and tells everybody to go like my my channel and go listen to my podcast. So I love you, Debbie. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you guys for listening. If you're going to be at Star Wars Celebration this year, let me know on Facebook or Twitter, and maybe we can meet up somewhere. All right, like uh, find me on Twitter at the Geek Blend and Facebook.com slash the Geek Blend. Also, check out the YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash the Geek Blend. And if you guys have any questions for me, hashtag Vader's Castle Podcast on Twitter. Again, that's hashtag Vader's Castle Podcast, all one word, lowercase, on Twitter, and I will answer your questions in the next episode. Again, thanks for listening and for all your support. If you were listening on iTunes or an iOS device, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could fulfill your destiny, as the emperor would say, by rating and reviewing the podcast. 
it does help to get us noticed. It really does. When you rate it, the podcast, it, like the ratings keep going higher and we keep going up on the list. That would be really great. Hope you guys have a really great weekend. Hopefully it's warm or not raining and crappy where you are and hope you have fun and enjoy everything. And may the force be with you always.